Ladies and ladies and ladies and ladies and gentlemen, la massisteria. Hi everyone, I'm Yvan Lebras from French National Museum of Natural History and scientific and technical coordinator of the French Biodiversity e Infrastructure, Paul National des Données de Biodiversité. Today, we will follow the meta barcoding with OBTools tutorial. So let's go for the show. So first thing to do is simply to go to Galaxy Ecology through URL ecology.galaxy.eu. Make sure you are logged in with the user uh, menu there. If you are not obliged to to be logged in to use Galaxy tools, but you can have a uh, particular restriction depending on the Galaxy instance you are using. Uh, for example, uh, sharing or reusing some workflows or having the possibility to create more than only one uh, history. So it's better if you, if you can create an account and often you just have to use existing um, uh, federating uh, uh, um, identification um, uh, systems like uh, ORCID, for example. So the Galaxy interface is composed of four parts, the header banner here, where you can go from workflow to, to data and through, through visualize uh, items. Uh, you can also log in from there uh, and uh, so on. Then on the left, you can find all the tools available so in this Galaxy for Ecology uh, instance with the subdomain of uh, usegalaxy.eu, the European Galaxy instance. Uh, so you will find all these tools in the main uh, usegalaxy.eu uh, Galaxy instance. Uh, and you can share for tools, uh, for example, uh, typing uh, terms like, for example, OB tools. I don't know if it's a uh, relevant one yes this is a relevant one and you have all the hobby tools tool suite uh, available there uh, on the right uh, you have your current history so here i have a history test uh, some tools we made with colleagues from climate uh, galaxy uh, initiative uh, around the uh, x array for example and uh, the data analysis of gis uh, sort of data uh, and you can create new histories and things like that so you see that you have one data set uh, uh, at the initiative as a origin of a, of a history and you can have several ones and after that each time you apply a tool to uh, an existing data set you create a new data set or new data sets uh, uh, in this history so you can track all the, the so tools you are using and parameters and input uh, data files and things like that. Uh, finally, on the center here, I can see that uh, I am just seeing a, a, a particular uh, a file, a GeoJSON file through open layers. But in fact, this this part is really to, to look at the content of, of files, like text file like this, or to uh, displays the tool form so you can uh, choose the data file on which you want to apply some uh, uh, parameters and uh, execute the, the tool. Um, uh, what I have to say is also that you can expand this part by reducing the toolbox or the history, for example, like that. Uh, history panel, for example, with the arrows on the down corners. And to start training, you can click on the little graduation hat on the top banner we have on this amazing usegalaxy.eu uh, instance. And uh, I make not a so good selection, I guess. This one. Okay, sorry for that. <laughs> um, and uh, access trainings, uh, simply open it on another page if you want. Uh, the training.galaxyproject.org slash training uh, material uh, website. But it's really easier if you are on the same screen, just looking at the, the tutorial. And when you have to, to go to your Galaxy instance, uh, you can just click 
around the, the, the screen and, and go back just clicking on the on the hat and you you will follow your tutorial like that. I think it's the best manner to do. It's really convenient, I think. So now we are ready to start. So let's go for the show. So now uh, we can just click on this hat and just to to see you, we are going to the ecology uh, section and then uh, following the meta barcoding environmental DNA through Obitools uh, hands-on tutorial. We will do uh, this tutorial. So now we can look uh, at the entire tutorial and take a quick look uh, at uh, the overview. So here the question is to analyze DNA, DNA metabarcoding uh, and also uh, environmental uh, DNA data produced on Illumina sequencer using the, the OB tools. So here we just learn to use this tools to deal with parent data to create consensus sequences and clean filter and analyze data to obtain uh, some interesting results. Uh, here we are searching for the diet of some wolves, for example. So we'll use Wolf's cats uh, data uh, available, in fact, on the official uh, Obitools tutorial website. And with this data set, we will try to establish a carnivore diet of four wolf. To do our wonderful analysis, we will use a workflow called Obitools, which is made of six tools, six Obitools, and other classical, classical uh, galaxy genomics tools. This workflow is dedicated to ecological analysis, so we can obtain a list of species from environmental sample. The details on each tool are written on the text just below, but for this video, we will go through the details further in the tutorial to avoid too many repetitions. So let's dig into this, this hands-on. Uh, we can now start by creating a, a new history. Uh, so you can maybe already have a new history there or, or just click the, the, the plus cross button there and, and rename your history. Uh, I don't know, for example, Ubi Tools uh, tutorial. And then you, you can, for example, uh, just check uh, once time, another time the um, tutorial. Uh, and we can go further. Uh, so yes, you can see that you can add uh, tags or annotation on your history if you, if you want. And now uh, the idea is to upload data, so to start working with, with this data. So there is a brief introduction about OB tools and OB tools in Galaxy uh, on this tutorial and I invite you to, to look at it uh, more deeply uh, when you read the tutorial. And now we, we will start to, to, to input data sets. So we have data sets on, uh, on uh, Zenodo uh, here, we don't want to facilitate too much your work, so we created a, an archive, a zip archive. You can uh, uh, access through the past fetch data upload there and just click start. So Galaxy will search to, to upload the, the archive which is remotely accessible. So now we just have to wait. Data is imported into your galaxy history. So now it's yellow, it means that the archive is 
send it to your Galaxy story from Zenodo. So I won't detail it. Uh, more things around data importation and things like that. But if you want to have more information, don't hesitate to go to to other hands-on tutorials, notably dedicated tutorial like Galaxy uh, 101, 101 for everyone. Uh, so yeah, we have our data in our history. This is an archive in zip format containing all the data sets needed for the tutorial. Managing zip archive is not the easiest way to 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 work uh, uh, on, on Galaxy. Uh, but uh, here we, we are thinking better to have such compressed files so we don't take too much uh, storage on Zenodo notably and we don't use too much bandwidth for data uh, movements so just to take care to, to carbon footprints. Uh, so and also to see you the real life when you have such an archive you want to, to deal without downloading, downloading uh, the archive on your computer then uploading it to Galaxy it's really more efficient uh, using the path fetch uh, option so you can directly upload data from a web service to, to Galaxy. So you can now unzip the content into your history uh, and after that uh, we can maybe uh, use each individual file independently. To do so, uh, we'll search for the unzip uh, Galaxy tool from the tool panel and select uh, the zip archive. Okay, extract all files, execute. So once the execution is done, if the unzip step is successful, resulting data sets are in green color. And if something went wrong, color is red. So here it's green and clicking on this data collection, we can see uh, individual data sets unzip from the original archive. Okay, groovy baby. Um, data collection uh, is, is really a wonderful functionality of Galaxy to deal with a bunch of data sets and notably a huge amount uh, of sequences files. Moreover, when you have parent uh, data sets, here we have heterogeneous uh, data sets, as you can see there. Uh, so we don't really want to consider the files an, uh, as an homogeneous group of files. Uh, so we can then give access to each data set independently for further two executions. And to do so, we need to unite individual data sets from data set collection on the history. Why we propose to act uh, like this and oh, it's in French. Why? Sorry for that. Um, it's because, in fact, when the data collection is created on the Galaxy history, each data set from the collection is an individual history data set automatically hidden from the history panel and accessible from the data collection view. So, here. Yeah. 
important point. If some data sets or options uh, information seems to be not updated on the history panel, don't hesitate to refresh the history panel. We are on a user-friendly graphical interface to cool, but this can have some drawbacks. <laughs> so once the unzip execution is done, you will have a new information on the top of your history panel. You have seven uh, data sets on your history. You can here click uh, on the files and uh, on hide or uh, rehide the, the, the data sets. Uh, last data handling pre-processing step need to be done here as Wolf Diet NGS filter is recognized as a simple text file, but not there. Here it's tabular, so you don't need to to modify it. Uh, but if it's in text, in your case, you have to manually uh, change data type and specify that in fact this is not just a a text uh, file, but in fact a tabular one. So in acting like this, but yeah, here uh, uh, it's already in, in tabular. And there is two sequencing files in FastQ format, Wolf R and Wolf. F corresponding to the forward and reverse sequences of uh, 12S mitochondrial locus. So here we have overlapping uh, forward and reverse reads. So the first obitual step is to apply a micro assembly. Like we can, as we can see. There, so microassembly of parent sequences with using Illumina paired end tool. Sequence records corresponding to the same read pair must be in the same order in the two files. So, first of all, I will search uh, the OB tools, Illumina parent tool. So, here we assume. Uh, they are on the same, uh, we, we have the same order of, of sequences. We specify the, the score, the minimum score for keeping element here, uh, 40, and we execute it. If the alignment score is below the defined score here, 40, the forward and reverse reads are not aligned, but concatenated. And the value of the mod attribute in the sequence header is set to joined instead of alignment. Here we can check the result looking at the value of the mod attributes of the first sequences. So we have to, to wait that uh, execution is is done. So uh, we can look at the resulting data set and look uh, at the mod attribute there. We see we have an alignment uh, statement here. So apparently, uh, OB tools, Illumina parent, uh, find the forward and reverse sequence and successfully uh, Align them uh, to create this uh, a micro micro assembly of the two reads uh, with uh, the the scoring of forty. So it's cool. This one two. This one two. So apparently we don't uh, 
it seems we, we don't mix our files, so it's, it's quite cool. Okay. Now we can continue. So the, the next step, in fact, is to use obgrep tool to discard sequences indicated as uh, joined. Yeah. Uh, where is the step? Yeah, this one. So we can use the OBGRIP, OBGRIP tool, taking the sequences from 11. Oh, but what happened when I open the OBGRIP tool form? I can't select the Illumina parent assembled sequences as if input sequences file. Do you know why? In fact, here it's because we need to take care about the fast queue format we have notably, uh, notably uh, related to the, the manner, the quality is encoded. Uh, to do so, I can use uh, fast QC, for example, a classical tool you have to, to use often uh, at the starting point of your genomics uh, workflow and execute it on the results of film apparent with uh, the common parameters. And FastQC will give us information about the quality of our sequence. Uh, and also uh, say to us how quality score is encoded, then FASQ Groomer can help you, you and me, you and me and me for you, to convert the format into a FASQ Songer uh, format. So FASQC is finished. Uh, if you look at the FASQC web page, you will find some information like the encoding information. So we are in Illumina 1.5 uh, version of score encoding. So now we can use FASQ Groomer with a classical tool to allow convert between various uh, encoding score towards, so here it's 1.5, so this one towards uh, FASQ Sanger um, score. So we will look Get the execution of FASQ Groomer. Okay, so the results seems to be okay. And now, if you are looking at OB tools and particularly the OB grip tool. Yeah, you will find the good file here. Uh, so now uh, we'll use OB grip and what is the thing we have to do with OB grip? So eliminate parent FASQ Groomer output file, okay. Uh, yeah, we have to choose, so specify the predicate and mode not join. So we will filter the, real, the sequences where the attribute mode is not joined but assembled. Okay. Execute.
So now we can look at the resulting file. And for example, the manner to, to look at this is to look at the oops, sorry, look at the cotton file. And maybe we can just as this is a, a big file, we can't uh, we only can see the first megabyte of the file looking uh, clicking on the high. So here I just search rapidly on at the join term in this uh, OBGREP results. And if I look at the input data set, you will see that uh, only on the first megabyte of the file, uh, there was some mod uh, equal to join. So just like this, we can see that effectively, apparently we filter a data set uh, and now we, we have a file with uh, smaller than the, the input file and we don't see any mod equal to joint uh, searching on the on the file just on the first megabyte uh, you can also uh, use a galaxy tool like for example select lines that match an expression Uh, select lines that match an expression, matching, for example, so you can select both input and output file, matching, uh, join, for example, just to see. So this is manners to, to verify that something was filtering, filtered during the big rep step so looking at the first megabyte uh, of the file or uh, at least looking at the difference in, in sizes and then you can also search for lines that match uh, a specific expression here joint And you can see that we have 186 sequences with module joined on the first uh, file and no sequences with mod equal to joined on the OBGREP output files. If you want to know more about the number of sequences, uh, who have been filtered, you can also use Galaxy tool like a line, word, character count of a data set to count the number of lines of each data set. And as this is FASTQ files, you can divide it by four and, and have the resulting number of sequences on both input and output uh, OBGREP uh, step, output files of OBGREP step. This is to, to answer the questions there is on the on the tutorial. Now we can assign each link sequence record to the corresponding sample marker combination. To do so, we use the NGS filter tool providing marker sample information from a tabular file who here is, is called a parameter file. Here you need to pay attention to the data type as the tool is asking a tabular file. For example, here we need to change the data type of the wolf underscore diet underscore NGS filter dot txt if it's recognize as a, a raw text file. So we can first look at this. Yeah, but okay, this is tabular. So we don't have to move to, to change data, uh, data types, but if you have to, you can act here and uh, uh, affect the tabular data type uh, uh, manually. So we yeah, pay attention to only use this manual uh, 
modification of the data type if you are sure that the data set is in this format because Galaxy will not uh, look at the content of the file, it just, uh, it just think you know what you are doing, in fact. <laughs> So you can use NGS filter normally from the OB grip of uh, OB tools, tool suite. So NGS filter. So the parameter file is worth diet NGS filter and the read is the OBGREP output. Considering the number of errors you want to allow, you can allow two errors for matching primers and specifying output data type uh, of a SKU format like that. Uh, you want to generate a file with only notified sequences, yes. So we see that uh, we have 1,384 sequences, not a sign on the original 44,717 uh, sequences. As the same DNA molecule can be sequenced several times, it is convenient to work with unique sequence. in order on the tablet to reduce both file size and computations time. This is the purpose of the OB unique tool. OB unique works through three steps to compare the reads in a data set to each other, group strictly identical reads together and output the sequence for each group and its count in the original data set. In this way, all duplicated reads are removed. OB unique is used here on trimmed and annotated file obtained by NGS filter with the sample option in attribute to merge. Here used to keep the information of the samples of origin for each unique sequence specifying merge as specific option. So sample and merge for OB unique. Oh, merge. I don't know if in English, this is the same as that in French. Oh, more. Uh, so I take NGS filter attribute to merge. So we say sample. Use specific option merge and execute. Oh, cool. Waiting for the job to be executed. We can play citizen science project here. So trying to recognize if this overfly is a male or female looking at the uh, the eyes of the hoverfly. Oh, it's not a beautiful picture there, so it's quite complicated. Hmm. What do you think about that? Hmm. Not easy. And my screen is too small. Sorry for that. Oh yes, this is a female. I think likely. Right? It's just because the uh, the picture is not beautiful. Yeah. Clearly, a female. Hmm. I think it's a female, but I'm not sure. Yeah, likely. Oh, 
I clearly cannot see. But wait, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can see obi unique results there with 4,308 sequences. So here we, we clearly uh, uh, reduce the number of sequences. And we see that the run of obi unique has added two key values on trees in the header of sequences. The first one is called merge sample. And another one is count. So we have to look at it. This is a manner of tools where he is writing a lot of information attributes on the on the name of the sequence file. Yeah, so here you see count equal to one. And merge sample, I, I, I don't see it, but I think it is written somewhere only we know. Oh, Sandy, how to have you gone? Ah, here, okay. So now we can use the OB annotate command specifying, uh, keeping only this um, information. So we don't want too much information for each sequences, only the count and merge ones. So with OB annotate, we will specify from OB unique the fact that we want to, to keep only uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay so uh obi unique and where i am uh, supposed to input sequence file keep only attribute with key so we can delay it we can create Okay. Ah, okay, sorry. Keep only attribute with key. Uh, what I am saying, the first key is uh, merge sample. I oh, know, okay. Count and merge sample. Okay, count. Okay, but for merge sample, I prefer to copy paste to be sure. Okay. And execute. Okay, so looking at the resulting file, we see that now we only have merge sample and count information. So it's it's easier to read, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so a set of sequences uh, async to to their corresponding samples does not mean that all sequences are biologically meaningful. Uh, I mean, some of the sequences can contain PCR on, and sequencing errors or cameras. To remove such sequences as much as possible, we first discard rare sequences and then sequence variants that likely correspond to artifacts. In that case, we first use obistat to get the counting statistics on the count attribute specifying the category attribute key. So we have to look at obistat simply by a key of an attribute account. We annotate simply by a key of attribute. We say count if I am not wrong, and use a specific option, no. All right. 
It's okay, it's alright. Okay, so here we can see. We have one sequence with more than 10,000 count and different partition. Okay. Then uh, we want to keep only the sequence having a minimum count and length. Based on previous knowledge, we set the cut off for keeping sequences for further analysis to a count of 10 and we also remove sequences oh sequences wow beautiful beautiful euro um, also remove sequences with a length shorter than 80 uh, base pairs so as we as we know in fact that the amplified uh, uh, 12s v5 barcode for vertebrates rates must have a length around 100 base pairs. To do so, we use OBGREP, sorry. Uh, and here, first time specifying count greater or equal to 10 as predicate option. And then the second time specifying 80 for Elmin option. Okay, so we will take Obi Grab. What's the cool Obi One gonna be? No, there is no Obi One. Obi Grab uh, on Obi Annotate Predicate. Parce que un chat quand il est cat retombe sur ses pattes. And here. Count greater or equal to 10. So I copy past it. Execute. And then I will execute another time predicate. But here for I mean. sur ses pattes of 80 base pair. Okay. Uh, on the result of Bobby Grab. Ah, but it's not executing now, so I, I have to wait. Okay, so now the first Obi Grip. It's green, super green. I can execute this new OB grip uh, from on the resulting the first OB grip execution. Okay. So we see that we, with the count, I can add a tag, for example, count. Then I kept only 172 sequences on the more than 4,000 uh, sequence as input. Okay. And the second one. is only removing three sequences. Three more sequences, okay. So finally, we want to clean a little bit our data, notably for PCR sequencing errors. So to do so, uh, 
with this use or be clean specifying we want to keep sequences with no variants with a count greater than five percent of their own count so with this parameter so okay We have to find O B clean and maximum number one threshold ratio five percent. It's that is okay. Okay. Attribute containing sample definition. Yeah, but this is merge sample. Okay. And uh, we want to select only sequences with the head status in at least one sequences. Okay, let's go for OB clean. So here we see with the clean step, we now have 26 sequences. So once it's denoising, has been done as uh, the next step. In diet analysis is of course to assign the barcodes to the corresponding species. In order um, to get the complete list of species associated to each sample. So taxonomic assignment of sequences requires a a reference database compiling all possible species to be notified in the sample. Assignment is then done based on sequence comparison between sample sequences and reference sequences. We here propose to use BLAST plus BLAST10. To do so, we search for the BLAST10 tool. and specify obclean as input data sets, okay. Uh, as Oh, it's a T blast and I was quite surprised by his mention of protein. So blast and yeah, not T plus 10. T and T, T and T, sorry. So nucleotide query sequence, yeah, this is obliquely not put. Uh, for the reference uh, sequences, we normally have with uh, zip archive something, oh, yeah, not locally. Uh, on this galaxy instance, but from our history from a FASTA file, we normally have yeah, DBV05R117. Uh, we'll make a mega blast used to find very, very similar sequences. The cutoff value can be, yeah, for example a little bit uh, smaller and in uh, advanced option we can specify we only want to keep one it okay
so here are the results of the blast. Okay, we see that plus 10 find 26 uh, reference sequences really highly similar to our 26 uh, corresponding query sequences. Cool. So everything is fine. Uh, this means that for each of our sequences, we have a hit with this uh, quite low E value. We can verify we really have all our 26 sequences using a tool as unique occurrences of each record applied to the to the first column. Occurrences. This is oh. this is a tool we often use and I don't know how it how to search for it. it's unique. Next. Unique. Yes, unique occurrences of each week. I don't know why occurrences not match the, the tool anyway. This can happen sometimes. It's you can have some some difficulties to find the tools, even if the, the word you are searching for is on the description. So don't hesitate to to go deeper on the research or uh, going directly on the tool section on the tool panel. So you can look at the, uh, here we only have 26 lines, but if you have um, if you have more lines, it can be convenient to use it uh, just to know if there is no redundancies here on the, on the first column. Okay, so let's verify if we have 26 unique sequences. So that's it. Okay, so just to verify it. Uh, okay, uh, to know the meaningful of the output of each uh, column of the output file, you can refer to the um, help of the Mega Blast of the Blast 10. Um, tool so here for example we have with we have this kind of column so the third one is a percentage of identical match for example and the fifth is the number of mismatch uh, six for number of gap openings and in column 11 the expectation value the e value so this is common columns you can use to filter and have more information about uh, the fact that your sequence is really perfect or not related to the reference. We now want to reassociate all the reference sequences information, but that is the species name. Uh, so you can see which species are potentially seen on the sample. To do so, uh, we will use uh, a tool called filter sequences by ID, specifying obliquely output data as a sequence file to be filtered. And uh, the third and first column of the Mega Blast on obliquely tabular output file. And that we only want positive match. Okay, so this one, and after we will make the other. So any you, you you can start to to filter sequences by ID from the dbv 5 r one one seven file or the obiclin output file. So I will make maybe like in the <laughs> tutorial. So starting with dbv 5 uh, Mega Blast colon 
two and just positive match. Filter sequences. By ID. DB, video five, tabular five, sequence either, uh, yeah, the mega blast. And I say, I'm say colon two, because colon two is, okay, colon two is the name of the reference sequences we are searching here, okay. And just positive match. Okay. And we want the same, but with OB clean. So we can take a look. Yeah, OB clean is really the data set we take as input. Okay, this, this is that. OB clean, uh, maybe by a blast, but now this is to research the name of the sequences of the query file so helium uh, blah 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 yeah helium blah 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 so it's colon one of the mega blast file results just positive match okay so if this tool will just uh, search for corresponding sequences from there to there and take all the information and from there to 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 there okay that's it Here we have the results on dbbo file. Okay, so we see that we have species name. And here we have some matching on the query file. Okay, did you know why we are only have 15 sequences there? I suppose this is because we have, I don't see this there. We have redundancy there for sure. For example, here and here, it's the same reference sequences. So I, here I make it by with my wonder eye, eagle eye, but um, you can also use uh, a tool like Unique on the colon uh, two, I think it's like that. Yeah. Yeah, you specify you want to look at unique occurrences of result on, only on the second colon. And you will see that normally, <laughs> I am not wrong, we will find 15 sequences because the query sequences, the 26 query sequences, on the 26 query sequences, there is some who are matching the same uh, reference sequences, in fact. Okay, roulement de tambour. Yeah, bingo, 15 lines. Oof. Uh, so uh, now what we have to do is to, to convert as FASTA files on, uh, there's two FASTA files uh, in tabular format so we can more easily 
deal with information on the file and create uh, something like a, uh, a table, a summary table uh, for, for results. To do so, there is a specific OBTools uh, program which is called OBTAB. Uh, you can also use uh, Gal classical Galaxy tools, like, uh, for example, there is FASTA to tabular uh, Galaxy tools. Here, uh, I propose to use uh, OBITAB on both reference and query filtered FASTA files into tabular. Okay. So I think. We are done like this. Okay. And now we can create a final synthesis uh, tabular file joining these files. Okay, our two tabular files, right, wow, a lot of information. So now we want to join uh, this files, so we can use a join two data sets side by side on a specific field tool, Galaxy tool. Uh, first run query obitab file. Uh, so this is a, the query one, it's not 26. Okay. Uh, the resulting file to the reference. Okay. Uh, we can use which color we can use. We can use a colon one. Ah, uh -huh. okay, so OB tab on OB clean colon one and Mega Blast colon one. Colon one, so helium uh, uh, mega blast. Okay. Colon one, so this is, is it. Fill empty colon, yes, single fill value and NA. Fill empty colon, yes. Uh, fill empty colon, yes. Fill columns by single fill value. Okay, so this is because we we have a header on our file with ID, definition count, and so on, on the bitup file. And we don't have either on the uh, on the Mega Blast result. So, proposing this normally will help you and me, and me, you, and me to, to conserve the, the header of this, uh, the OBTAB file. Okay, so yeah, I think I made a, a mistake because I forgot to, if I look at it, yeah, I have no either. So I think I forgot to specify, I want to keep the either 
line. Okay, so I hope now, oh yeah, now we have the, the header here for the obita, obita and we clean results, okay. And here he put duplicate the first line, okay. Why not? Um, then joining the resulting file to the reference database obitab one. So is this one twenty eight? I have to find the colon here twenty six. The twenty six of this file apparently is the uh, ID of the reference sequences. And the reference sequences is, is uh, yeah, 28 colon one. Okay. So now we have this file resulting of the joining of the three files. So we normally have all the information we need from uh, reference sequences and query sequences. I can deactivate the scratch book. And now in to facilitate, to have something in fact easier to read and understand, we can create a final tabular file containing only columns with important information. So to do so, we can use the tool cut columns. So pay attention that there is different tools called cut column from a table. There is an advanced cut one, but here you can't uh, choose the order of the column you want to, to cut. You see that you, so the ordering is uh, related to the, uh, the increase of the number of the column. And you have this uh, cut column from a table where you, you can specify each column you want to, to keep. So you can uh, propose, for example, C1, C3, then C2, or thing like that. So you can rearrange this, uh, the, the columns if you want. So here, I will propose something like this. And I hope this is a good one. So good color C1. It's for the query sequence. Okay. Then C3 to C7 is the information around query count. Okay. And after that, normally after 50, we have the reference sequences, family genus and reference annotation. I will see if it works or if I made a mistake. So we see if the... 
account information ID, family ID, genus name and definition. Okay, so that's it. Now we have all the information, only the important information. And we see that this final tabular file can be filtered. Uh, for example, looking only at sample with large count, for example, greater than 1000 uh, on this column, so the column two, filter data, so I can search for the, this amazing tool I often use. Oof. Filter data on any column using simple expression, searching for, uh, Oh yes, we can work on the total count, but maybe the best here is to specify that depending the, on the sample. Okay, three, four, five, or six. The so current three for the first sample. Or. Oh. The same for C4, C5, C6. So we only want to keep a line if there is greater than 1,000 uh, sequences count for the, for the line, for one of the four samples. Uh, yes, there is a either. Uh... Okay. Oh, only four lines. So we 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 move all the sequences where there is not substantial count. Now we can say that for this wolf, we find this diet type for this one, this, this one, the same, and this one, this. And to know what the, the wolves eat, we can see here, so, oh, marmota. Hmm. I think it can be really good with some cheese or thing like that. So this sample, this wolf, it's a marmota. This one, uh, some cervidae. I don't know what is cervus elaphus. Uh, Elephus. Okay, beautiful, beautiful animals. Uh, a serre. And the other one it was Capre Olus. Capre Olus, if I am not saying a mistake. Okay, a chevreuil. Chevreuil. Mm, yum, yum. Yeah, this one. Okay, so uh, here you just did an ecological analysis, finding diet from four world faces. Uh, so now, uh, you, not faces, but faces. <laughs> so now you know how to pre process metabarcoding data on Galaxy, producing quantitative information with quality checks and filtering results to interpret it. And to have a synthesis table you can share broadly. Not that easy to get immediately. So I hope I didn't bore you too much with technicalities and that you enjoy this training with me. 
Uh, don't hesitate to don't hesitate um, to ask questions on the event chat or by email at this address so Yvan dot uh, le uh, dash uh, bras pierre a s at m n h n dot f r and if you have uh, any suggestion uh, uh, on how to make this training better don't hesitate to contact me as well or better to propose it on the galaxy training material you can for example go on the hands-on and you see that you have a uh, on the menu uh, possibility to propose to edit this um, this uh, tutorial directly on, on github uh, uh, a last point is related to to this tutorial and all the tutorial we can follow uh, on this event uh, don't hesitate to give feedback and use uh, the form at the end of each uh, tutorial Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.